Good morning. I want to welcome you here to Zion Lutheran Church on this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. If you're wondering why do you have that mask on, it's because I have been dealing with a cold during this past week. So I just want to be safe with you and not risk. I don't think I am contagious, but I don't want to take that risk. Anyway, that's what the mask is about. And as we worship today, let us now rise for the invocation and confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace that breaks into this world from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace that knows no boundaries, for growth in the church around the world, and for unity around the cross of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who respond here in worship and praise to our victorious King, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Gracious God, by your light of grace shining in our hearts and enlightened by the cross of our Savior Jesus Christ, inspire in us a faith that is alive and glorifies you in all we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 58. Why have we fasted, and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure, and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh, then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared, prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts, except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. 
But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today we are skipping over the children's time. Uh, I just want to be safe on that one. But we'll continue with the catechism. Last week we did the first article. Today is the second article. In the second article of the Creed, our confession is focused on the person and work of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He came to bear our sins on the cross and to bring us back to God. We confess. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. What does this mean? You may be seated.
and grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the gospel lesson for today, St. Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 13, just as it was read earlier. Do you ever watch the news on television? And you sit there and you, you hear the people on the television set and you marvel at what you're hearing because it doesn't seem to make sense. You ever talk to your television? I know some people who do. And when you talk to it, just think of this, they don't hear you. You know, they don't hear what you're saying. But I know it does get that sense of relief out of you just to talk, you know. I used to do that for religious programs on TV. When I first got married, Sally used to enjoy hearing me yell at the preacher or something. I stopped watching those after a while. But you think about it, who are the people that really count in the world? Is it the, the media? Who are the most influential people in, in the world today? Is it the people involved in things like Facebook and other social things on the internet? Or maybe it's Hollywood. Maybe it's the rich and famous. Or maybe it's the politicians in Washington, D.C. Oh, wait a minute, they are the rich and famous. Okay. But sometimes you feel like, who are you? What, what, what clout, what influence do you have in the world today? Especially being a Christian. Christians today seem to have no clout, no influence. We're just here trying to uh, live our Christian faith. And yet Jesus says something very interesting in the gospel today that he sees our lives in a different perspective. He calls his disciples, this is Matthew 5, the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, right after the Beatitudes. Remember the Beatitudes? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. How about this? Blessed are the meek. You know, what good is it being meek? And yet, what did Jesus say? The meek shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are persecuted. And to those very people, he says to them, his disciples, he says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. He didn't say, you know, you can be the salt of the earth if you get your act together. Come on now. Or you can be a light in the world if you try to make some changes in your life. To, no, it's because of them who are so blessed by Christ, by the grace of God in Jesus Christ, that God has so impacted them with his love and mercy and grace that they are gifts to the world. You are a blessing to this world. And in God's sight, the ones who are the most influential as he wants people to be are people like you, like his disciples, who are receiving the benefits of his grace, listening to him teach, being blessed by his mercy and love. That's why he says you are the salt. You flavor the world. You give it what it really needs. We had a member who, because of heart conditions, he had to have a salt-free diet. I'll never forget one day he was at the hospital waiting to be discharged. He's in the hallway. Can't wait to get home. And I said to him, what are you going to have for lunch today? And he said, I'm going to have a hot dog. He said that with a nurse two feet away. The nurse said, no, you're not. But I have a feeling he did. I've had people complain about having a salt-free diet, how bland it is. It's awful. Well, that's what the world would be like without you, without Christians, without people who believe in Jesus Christ, without people who are loved by him and people who love him back. And what about a light? 
I don't know about you, but this world just seems to get darker and darker. And, and it just is amazing. Like a week ago, a woman almost had her purse snatched at Stop and Shop in Wallingford, which I always thought would be a safe place. And a woman before that had a purse snatched, I think, down in North Haven at a pizza place. We've had carjackings. We've had robberies, thefts. I look at the police report sometimes, and I see how many more uh, crimes are being committed. It's not getting any better. There is a darkness that we see in the world. And I thank God that Jesus commends people like you. A light that shines. And Jesus adds this, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. These are not works that we do for our own attention. <coughs> These are works that bring glory to God. Our lights just shine because we know God loves us. Don't hide it. Let people know how important it is to be loved by God, to have a Savior, Jesus. And Jesus was truly a real person who came into this world and lived. History can testify to that. And not only did he live, he died. He died a death that was prophesied 700 years before his birth. And he rose again, just as it was predicted in the Old Testament. And it was witnessed by people, by women, by disciples, and others. And because of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you and I are blessed, blessed to be a light in a dark world. So don't ever think that you don't count. God sees the impact that you have in such a tough world. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. In our prayers, we have, first, the altar flowers are given by Deborah Morrow in honor of the birthdays of Michelle Jeffrey and Barbara Robson. The eternal light is lit by Deborah Morrow in memory of Mary Claire and George. And also in our prayers, we pray for Kathy, Arlene, Sally, Ron and Carol, Nancy, Fred, Susan Brady requested prayers for the friends and family of Lila Rusak, who passed last week. Harold Kirchstein requested prayers for Brent, that he would receive good test results from his biopsy. Karen Perzanowski requested prayers for those struggling to stretch their income to cover necessities. Pray for our first responders, military and government officials for their safety and making wise decisions. Pray for pregnant women that they may see their babies born. Tony Pierre uh, requested a prayer for America in the struggle with food addiction. And Diana Giannotti, Donna Giannotti requested a prayer for the Americans that can't afford to feed or house their families. Jean Gaudio request, requested prayers for her neighbor, Joe, having a medical procedure on Thursday. We also pray for both Don and Maureen uh, who are recovering from surgeries. With that in mind, if we have a couple of people to, to gather the offerings, if they could please come up.
please rise. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will Almighty God, we give you thanks for your liberating word made known, especially in the light shining through the glorious cross of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that your word enlighten our hearts and minds now, that we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith in all that we say and do. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And by your light of life, rule and govern your whole church throughout the world that all of those who proclaim your truth be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, and that faith and love be strengthened and increased in all of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Bless our country and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound everywhere. We commend to you the care of our schools so that our children grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue bringing forth wholesome fruits of life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort all who are in trouble, sickness, anguish, or any other adversity. Grant courage and strength to all who suffer for your name's sake. In every time of trouble, show yourself a very present help, the Savior of all. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Accept, we pray, our bodies and souls, hearts and minds, all our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service. Help us to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. <laughs> Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
The body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us rise. Let us pray. Thanks and praise be to you, Almighty God, for in your Son's very body and blood you have increased in us the gracious light of saving faith. Help us that this young light may shine through us in all the world, all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. that this coming Saturday at 5 to 7, the youth are sponsoring a Valentine's dinner in the Church Fellowship Hall downstairs. Tickets are $10 for adults. It's chicken parmesan. Uh, children can have pizza for $3. Tickets are sold out of the foyer. So ask if you want more details. Have a wonderful and blessed week. <laughs>